Hello and welcome to another episode of the Business of Business podcast. I'm your host, Roy. Of course, we are the podcast that brings you a wide variety of guests to speak on a, a diverse set of topics. Uh, there's always something going on in our business that we could do better to be successful. And there's some, uh, sometimes we don't even know what we don't know in order to help us be successful. So we have awesome guests like we have today. Uh, we have Mickey Kennedy. He's an expert in, at helping small business authors and startups to increase their visibility and credibility. Uh, Mickey founded e-releases 22 years ago after realizing that small businesses desperately need a press release service that they can actually afford, giving them access to the media and to national newswire, all with a personal touch. Mickey lives in Baltimore County with his family and two feuding cats. He enjoys British science fiction and acknowledges an unhealthy addiction to diet sodas. Mickey holds an MFA in creative writing with an emphasis in poetry from George Mason University. He still writes poetry uh, most Monday nights virtually, of course, now uh, with a group of fellow misfits in Brunswick, Maryland. So Mickey, welcome to the show. Great. Glad to be here. Yeah. Uh, a couple of few, I can agree. I can uh, kind of relate to you there on the feuding cats. We've got a couple of dogs like that. And then the addiction to diet soda. I do good putting it down for a day or two, but it seems like it always comes back up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I've, I've stopped a million times and I keep going back to it. Kind of like smoking. It's like, well, it was so easy to quit. I'll just drink some more and uh, I can quit anytime I want to. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Well, uh, you know, I, I, when we talked earlier, I think the, um, you know, the uh, press releases, something that we, we don't maybe take enough advantage of as small businesses. A lot of times we just don't know how they work. Sometimes we don't know. Um, a lot of times I think, you know, like myself, until I did a little research, I thought press releases were things that big news companies put out on companies. I did not really, you know, put it together that press releases were basically internal documents that were released out. So anyway, why don't we, why don't we just start there? I think it's, um, you know, it's a great time to mention that there are so many uh, channels available to us in the marketing world to try to get our name out there. And this is just one that tends to be a little underutilized. Would, would you agree with that? I would. Uh, I think a lot of people feel that uh, a press release is something that you have to be an important or large company in order to use. And it's really not the case. Uh, you know, small businesses, anybody with an interesting story or the ability to, to create some strategy and make their story interesting has the ability to get uh, media coverage as a result of sending out a press release. Yeah, and there's all kinds of, um, I think the other thing is sometimes we think that, well, uh, nobody's gonna pick up my story and put it in the middle of the Wall Street Journal or I'm not gonna be featured on the, you know, the five o'clock news. So really what's the point? But I think there's a, there's a huge mechanism kind of behind, you know, discounting those two large uh, viewerships, <clears throat> excuse me. There's a big mechanism behind there that can really help businesses. Right. Yeah. Uh, you, when you issue a release, occasionally, you know, big uh, newspapers or large publications will pick it up. But what a lot of people find is uh, their trade publications will pick it up, which is very instrumental for them, uh, which a lot of them don't take into account. And also uh, there's bloggers, smaller websites, uh, sometimes uh, radio prog programs and, and even podcasters that are covering a particular industry or topic will reach out to them because of a press release and say, hey, I'd like to talk to you more or turn that into an article or a story about them. So, um, you know, I, I've had people who get more uh, feedback, more potential uh, partnerships and favorable results from a trade publication mentioned than per se a national uh, newspaper. Um, it, so. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, as we talked uh, the other day, a couple of things that you mentioned is we always think about the, you know, the driving the customer to us, but there's a couple side effects of this. And in, in like you said, maybe suppliers that want to work with you and, I've even seen some press releases for um, companies that I thought, wow, that would be a good company to work for. So I, I guess you could probably even attract some 
uh, talent to your company too by doing this. Yeah, I've had people who said that uh, they've tried to work with a supplier for years and they just get ignored and they issue a few releases and all of a sudden that supplier reaches out to them and they're and you know and they have uh, you know affiliate relationships that get uh, you know uh, developed because of a press release. So there's right. lots of different people that could reach you uh, in addition to your customers. Uh, it's always great when a customer uh, comes in from a, uh, an article that was written about a press release, but sometimes uh, people aren't really aware of the additional people that see that, uh, uh, you know, with partners, uh, potential sponsors, uh, things like that. Yeah. And there's, um, Again, I, I will ask this as a question, but I think that there's also some SEO value because uh, there's a huge network of websites that go behind all these national news companies. And I can speak to a little bit of that of experience. I had a, a lady from a local channel years ago that she reached out and did just a, it's like a two paragraph article on me, but that was kind of her job was uh, filling up this local affiliates news site with, um, you know, human interest stories from the area. We didn't make the error, but it still, you know, kind of works. Uh, I guess it works for us and that there's exposure on this top level domain website that, you know, mentioned myself and my yeah. company. Um, so uh, SEO is a, a huge benefit that happens with earned media. And that's usually when your press release has been turned into an article as opposed to just being syndicated as duplicate content. Um, yeah. And well, what a lot of people don't know is that when you get a story in New York Times or the Wall Street Journal, or even a small publication, a lot of times they don't link to your website, but you still get the benefit as if they did. Um, Google yeah. actually has a patent on this, and a lot of people are aware of it, that uh, uh, Google can contextually determine that that article is about you, even though there's no link to you. And they give you the credit as if there was a link to you. So, you know, there's a lot of SEO benefit uh, for the times that they do link to you, but you also get that SEO benefit when they don't link to you as well. Yeah, and I think we can talk about, uh, you know, even when we look at driving customers, you know, this may not, I guess we may get a little, if we release a press release and somebody sees it and they want our product or service, we may get a little bump, but this is also a long play because these press releases will live eternally, you know, out there on the internet, wherever they're picked up. You know, and the other thing I've seen, and, and uh, I find myself preaching patience more and more when we talk about marketing because uh, nothing is... And, and, well, you, sometimes you get lucky and things are instantaneous, but a lot of times things can take a long time. And I've noticed on um, some news stories that I've seen lately, they, uh, they were recorded like months and months and months ago. So if somebody even was going to pick up our press release, turn it into a story, th this may not all happen in this next week. And so, we, you know, we have to kind of keep working it and realize that, you know, things can happen months out from now that will be very beneficial. Is that kind of what you have found? Exactly. And sometimes uh, what a lot of people don't realize is when you do issue a release over a real newswire, like PR Newswire is the largest and oldest newswire press releases, um, it's archived permanently for journalists. And so when journalists go in and do searches, they're going to pull up all the releases on that topic. And if it's a very narrow topic or the keywords that they're doing just happen to be in your press release, uh, you're gonna pop up. And a lot of times they'll reach out to you for a quote or to get a little more information, but you know, uh, it's, it's a valuable tool for them. So it's not unusual for people to get media coverage six months, a year, even longer after a release goes out. A little bit off topic, but I think now's a good time to bring up. There is a service out there, uh, Haro, H A R. Help a reporter out. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sure you've heard of it. Help a reporter out. So that's a good resource that um, I've used it before. So I'll let you talk a little bit about it. But basically, it puts a lot of questions out there. They are, are reporters soliciting answers. So I'll, I'll let you talk a little bit. Yeah, about so that basically a help a reporter out is uh, free. <laughs> I think there is a paid option. But for most people, free works. And it's actually a journalist who's working on a story and saying, I would love to talk to an expert on this particular niche or something really specific. Uh, and so it's a great way for you to, uh, you know, see that reach out to them and, and get paid 
pick up. The downside of it is a lot of people know about Helper Reporter out now or Harrow. And as a result, it's a little more competitive these days. So it's not unusual if it's a broad topic to have a reporter get like two or 300 inquiries from people saying, I'd love to be the focus of your story. So that's the only downside about it. It, it, Years ago, it was a great tool. Very few people knew about it. And so uh, it, 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 you know, some of that magic is is rubbed off of it as a result of just more people knowing about it and the fact that there is a free option for it. Yeah. That's another point I was going to make is that uh, you have to submit a lot of responses before you even get any uh, any activity whatsoever. So again, it's a long play. You know, what I used to do is that was part of my morning routine would just sit down and answer five questions and then move on. You know, just, you have to keep up with it every day though, because it, like you said, it's who knows, especially on general topics. You know, if you have a very uh, unique niche, you may be able to slide in there, but if it's a general topic about, you know, what'd you have for breakfast this morning that, uh, you know, there's probably hundreds of thousands of people sending responses in on that one. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, let's get back to the, uh, to the press releases themselves. So who, I, I realize anybody can do it, but who are they best suited for I me? Mean, why would I want to do it? And when would I want to do one as a small business? Okay. So um, you kind of have to look reverse engineer it and so at the end of the day any journalist that picks it up is basically trying to get content in front of their readers um, or viewers that they feel would be if you have something that you're doing that's uh, interesting and you know potentially news uh, then that is a great producing a uh, a new bit or you've improved your your shopping experience or something like that it may has to find that you know interesting enough for the audience so that is the downside of of, of something like that uh you know the journalists they love numbers so if you have a survey or study that you did that's very newsworthy so that stands a really good chance of being turned into an article um if you're uh, introducing uh, a topic that is really hot right now, something that elevates the conversation, that does really well. But if it's just you know you ish, uh, joining the conversation uh, with nothing new to you know that you're, but uh, and then we have um, just j- just running through um, things that they like. Um, they love quotes that are really captivating. If you can be a contrarian and say something that's a little unpopular, that's a great way to get uh, picked up in the media. Because uh, it, you know, if if everybody's saying something is really good, uh, all those people with your quote. But if you're the one person that says, "Hey, this isn't so good," and this is why, and it's a, a well reasoned argument, they're much more likely to pick you up because they want to have both. Uh, ideas represented, you know, a good journalist will have the, uh, uh, you know, both sides of an argument, but many times they go to press with only one side because there's nobody there saying the contrarian or opposite view. Uh, so if you're comfortable with that, that's a great strategy that works again and again. Yeah. And sometimes we, uh, uh, what's the saying, you know, uh, some, pr- some press is better than no press or some attention. And so, you know, there's a lot of times people actually can build their business or they build their their marketing strategy on that contrarian approach. You have to be able to take the heat that may come from that. But, you know, a lot of times people are interested in that view. And so it, it um, I guess, just in today's challenging times, it can be, uh, you can gain a lot of attention that way. Just have to say sometimes the it, you can, you just have to be able to deal with the negative fallout that may come from that. Right. You don't want to say anything that's going to alienate, alienate you from your customers or even your industry. But, uh, you know, the examples I always use is if everyone's talking about, you know, we have to be more environmentally conscious and things like that, uh, uh, you know, you might want to say electric cars are bad for the environment, pointing out that the current battery technology uh, is 
uh, not environmentally sound the way they mine the materials for it. Um, you know, we currently are producing most of the electricity that'll charge these cars through coal and stuff like that. So there's there's a way that you can come across as being well reasoned and not yes. you know the the crazy uncle of the industry or something like that. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> All right. So um, I, I think you know we want to point out too is that. Uh, you know, these need to be well written. And I know that, you know, you have uh, your background is in creative writing. So, you know, that's a good, um, a good reason to, you know, turn to a professional to do this. But can you kind of tell us the structure about, I guess, about the page? Because usually they're typically a page or less. Is that correct? Is that that's you correct? Want? Most of them fall with under 500 <laughs> words. Uh, 400 words is what the newswire uh, advises people. Um, you want to get the most interesting uh, and, and uh, relevant information to them. So you want the headline to be very apparent uh, what the press release is about. You want to avoid like the New York Post headlines, which are for consumers, not journalists, that are like full of puns and stuff, but you really don't know what the story is about. Because journalists, unlike consumers, aren't going to say, wow, that's a very clickbaity headline, I'm going to read on. The journalist <laughs> is busy streaming lots of headlines and saying, I don't know what that's about, I'm going to move on. Uh, yeah. So the opening uh, headline, the opening sentence, uh, even the opening paragraph are the most important thing. Um, and then you want to support that with as much information as you need. And then people generally um, end the press release with an about section uh, or boilerplate where it's like about company. And it's just uh, a few sentences about that company. A lot of times that gets reused again and again in, in future releases. You may update it from time to time. And then you have a media contact uh, with the name. Uh, phone numbers recommended because journalists under deadline will often have to be working on the story and say, I need this answered before we can go to press. Otherwise, I have to kill the story. And so you definitely want uh, the phone number and an email address as well. Okay. So what about uh, writing it like for a small uh, business, uh, so entrepreneur, solopreneur, what, the difference between writing it as first party versus a third okay. party. Right. Yeah. So you want to write it as third person. It has the appearance of being objective. Um, if you do say anything in first person, it's usually a quote that then is attributed to a person at the company, whether it's you or someone else. Um, it's just the style uh, that press releases are written. They're, they're not meant to be uh, an article format per se, but I do see that occasionally. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, used to be there would be a feature channel where you would write a feature article yourself and make it available. That being said, a lot of people aren't gonna use the feature uh, story verbatim, unless they're small papers. So, you know, the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times, everything they run has been written by them. So, uh, you know, that's why the press release style is probably better suited for larger public publications. And if you are doing more article style, you still have to maintain that third person uh, objective view. Uh, but, uh, you know, that might be appropriate if, you, if your target is like local papers or smaller publications. Okay. And then you, you mentioned earlier PR wire. So now when you seek out a company like them, they are pretty much the distribution channel to like blow this out to a whole bunch of other different outlets. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, PR Newswire is a, a newswire platform uh, that started, I think in the fifties and uh, they were, they were the first player that, uh, basically handled taking news and uh, sending it to newsrooms across the country. Uh, at the time, it was through dedicated feeds, a lot of it satellite broadcast, uh, teletype systems. It's changed now with the internet, so it's available electronically. Journalists can log in from anywhere to their, their account. Um, a lot of people uh, are familiar with uh, other types of newswires like Reuters, United Press International, Associated Press or AP, and they don't run press releases. They will accept press releases, but everything that they run has been written by them. So they, um, they're paid uh, by newspapers to license their content. So if you're a small paper like the Baltimore Sun and a national news story happened, rather than have one of your reporters write the article, they can just take it already written from say the Associated Press. And you'll sometimes see that in your, your newspaper, UPI or AP. And it just means 
they're using that content. On the press release side, there's really only three news wires or press releases here in the US, and that's uh, PR Newswire, Business Wire, and uh, the other one uh, is Globe Newswire, which has changed to Entrado. Uh, it, 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 it's, had, it's had some um, uh, migrations and acquisitions over the years, so their branding is a little all over the place at the moment. Uh, but uh, Bus uh, Business Wire is large. Um, very corporate driven. PR Newswire is the oldest and largest. So it, it deals with a lot of different places. That being said, they're all very expensive. Uh, to move a press release nationally of like say 400 words, you're gonna spend about $600 with uh, Entrado or Globe Newswire and closer to $1,000 for Business Wire and PR Newswire. Uh, that being said, all of the releases at my company, e-releases go out over PR Newswire and they start at a couple hundred dollars uh, for a new customer coming in. So it's substantially cheaper. It is a US distribution. Uh, it is a custom national distribution uh, that was developed in, in partnership with them. And we sort of act as a co-op for small business owners, allowing them to, okay. to get access to the newswire. Um, in addition to that, we do a little bit of uh, email direct sends to journalist as well. So you get the newswire distribution and the, the email sends that happens. And at the end of the day, uh, hopefully it results in a story being written about you. Um, but uh, at the minimum, you will get your press release syndicated on a few websites where it's verbatim just appears on a few websites. A lot of them are financial websites like Yahoo News and uh, or I think it's actually the finance section of Yahoo uh, News that it appears under. And so that's good, but that's not the ultimate goal of a press release. You really want to get someone to write a, a unique article about you. And uh, that does happen. And when it does, you know, it can be really beneficial to a, a, a business or a company. And let's t talk about a couple of more advantages of, you know, using a, a service like yourself, not only the, the writing, you know, for non writer writers that that's going to be the most important part because uh, I don't know, you can just tell when some, when uh, if it's well-written, somebody's going to be much more apt to want to take interest in it. If the, if the headline gets them and they get down into it, the, it needs to be well-written first off, but let's talk about the, I guess that um, the credibility part, I mean, I could spend my time reaching out to local journalists or mash. I wouldn't even start. I don't have the contacts, but they see my email. The chances are they're not even going to read it where somebody like yourself that is used to dealing with them. You, you kind of have that credibility that's already built up as well. Right. Yeah. We've been in business for a little over 22 years. And when I started, I was reaching out to all the journalists individually uh, over the phone and through email. And so it's changed a little bit and became a little more streamlined over, over the years. But yeah, uh, we, we have a strong reputation for sending stuff that uh, is is interesting and it represents the small business world, uh, which a lot of journalists are very happy to include because uh, while the big companies always get the media coverage that they do get, uh, journalists find that their readers are really interested in quirky, strange, interesting, new little things and new little uh, tidbits. So uh, small businesses seem to feel that very well, startups as well. Um, you know, they're, they're usually doing something that's a little bit different than everybody else. Uh, otherwise, they wouldn't get the funding and the growth and stuff like that that, that comes with being a startup. Uh, but uh, I always tell right. people, take, take a strong look at your business. Uh, look at your USP, your unique selling proposition. What is it? If you don't have one, you really need to find one uh, because your, your long-term growth really depends on you being able to differentiate yourself from your competitors. And uh, you often want to align that with something that's potentially newsworthy as well. Yeah. Yeah. And as you mentioned earlier that, um, you know, we need, I guess there needs to be a key, um, there needs to be something happening to trigger the press release. It's not and I want to try to make the comparison to, um, you know, to let's just say a blog, you know, blogs, you want to put these things out, uh, you know, every week or whatever your schedule is, you want to put out good content for your readers. But with this press release, it needs to be, it needs to be a big thing, something that big has happened with the company to try to get, it's not just, you know, 
you don't want to write one that, hey, it's just another day uh, here in paradise. And this is, you know, this is what we do. There needs to be something that's out of the ordinary because these aren't going to be released in series. And I would ask that, you know, let's, again, I'll ask this as a question is, you know, we want to put one of these out, but let's say a couple bigger things are happening. Do we want to do succession? Do you want to put a, put one out there and kind of let it simmer and try to get some traction from it before you release a second one? Or how, how would that work? I always suggest that as you have important milestones happen, issue them. And if it just so happens that you issued a release last week, if this is a completely distinct and different uh, milestone, feel free to go ahead and send it out. Um, that being said, if you really don't have anything interesting happening, uh, you know, try to create something. Uh, a lot of times if you reach out to a trade show or uh, an industry trade association, um, you might be able to uh, get permission to send, have them send a survey to their members and uh, you can co-brand that survey and do a press release and, and get that out there. Um, you know, people love statistics and numbers. And that, what's really important is when you do that survey, you wanna have a few questions that are a little strange, a little quirky. And those are the questions that you will put in the headline of your press release and say, uh, did you realize 27% of insurance actuaries, um, you know, uh, uh, do X, Y, and Z. And uh, those are the things that people want to know. I mean, Cosmopolitan Magazine learned this decades ago. Women love statistics. People love statistics. It doesn't matter what the answer is, but it'll say, did you realize that 27% of all men do this in the bedroom? They're going to want to go to page 84 and figure out what that is. <laughs> and uh, you can do the same thing with the study or survey that you're doing where you create these really quirky, interesting questions. And it's really not important whether 2% of the industry or 98% of the industry feel that way. It's when uh, that question is given to to the reader, they want to know the answer and they're going to read that article. And, uh, you, you know, those are the types of things that you can do to make a press release that's really well received within your industry and get a lot of media pickup. Okay. Other things that so work really the, well are rankings, like top 10 rankings within your industry for a particular topic or industry. Yeah, yeah, those always work good. Uh, something that they suggest always to do the ranking. I'm, I'm the worst because if I see that, I'm actually right before we uh, started taping this, there was a one about some uh, bands with big downloads on Spotify. And I was just reading them to my girlfriend because it was like the top five. Of them. <laughs> so yeah, we're all, we're all get sucked in by that for sure. So if, um, if, we're, if I was going to reach out to you and say, um, Hey, I want to do this. Can you kind of walk me through what is that process? What is that time frame to actually get one, uh, get a press release actually out there? Right. So if you have a press release already written um, and it's in the right style and everything like that, uh, we can get it out for you as early as the next business day. That being said, I always recommend if this is your first release uh, to get it to us two to three business days before, just in case there's an issue. The editors look at everything and feel free to ask the editor to look it over and say, this is my first release. Could you look it over and make sure it looks okay? Um, uh, Everybody at, at, at our company is, a, is an editor. Uh, we don't have any salespeople. So uh, when you talk to somebody, it's someone who can pull up your release and give you real positive or negative feedback uh, as warranted. Uh, ultimately, we want you to succeed. If you're looking for having a release written, which is always a good idea for your first release um, at, at a minimum, uh, I would allow about a week or so. Um, it generally takes uh, three business days from the time that we get your order to get the release back to you to review. There may be some changes you want back and forth um, or some clarification that's needed. So I, I would always say about a week for that. Um, that being said, uh, a lot of times uh, uh, people 
develop a release or have an idea for a release and they don't have the strategy in place. They haven't really developed a PR plan. So I would always tell people to spend a little more time on your strategy than actually writing the release uh, because uh, that's going to make the biggest difference, whether it's newsworthy enough for, for the journalist. And I did recently create a, um, a, a mastermind class that I'm giving free to people on PR strategy. And it's at ereleases.com slash plan p-l-a-n and it basically gives you all the strategies that my best customers over the last 22 years have utilized that work and continue to work and these are things like the study and survey that i mentioned before uh, the contrarian view there's just several of those that work again and again for my clients and uh, that's more important than the press release writing because you can write a really great press release but if it's about a new hire at your company, very few people are going to be interested in that. Maybe a trade publication, maybe a local newspaper. Um, so if you're going to pay to issue a release over the newswire, you want to be it, uh, to do it with something that's strategic enough that you potentially could get some strong media coverage. Okay. Yeah. And I guess the second part of that is you need to be prepared in case somebody actually does reach out. Sometimes we, uh, you know, we, we, we lob those rocks over the hill and then uh, you never think somebody's going to throw one back at you. So what do we do? You know, it's like, what, what is that next step? We need to be prepared for that. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, generally, uh, journalists will contact you if they need clarification or they want to feel that they understand something well enough. Like, this is my impression and this is what I'm working on. It's uh, journalists are a lot of English majors and they're a little shy. So it's not unusual to just have them develop an article based on the press release and looking at your website. They really only contact you if they have a question or they need some clarification. And okay. you know, you've done a really great job with your press release when you see articles starting to appear and they never contacted you. That meant they got everything they needed out of your website and uh, your press release. They didn't have to come to you. Okay. Yeah. And let's talk about PR for a minute. If you, if we can, I know that's very another underutilized, let's say. And I think it's um, sometimes the more human humanitarian the story is, the easier we can get uh, things picked up by local news agencies. Um, I know I used to do some work for a volunteer organization that, you know, um, it was pretty easy to reach out to a local news radio or to the TV and just get a little bit of coverage or the newspaper. But as a business, you know, it, I guess there's uh, thousands of people trying to reach out to get a little free advertising to get it covered. So, uh, but one thing that was brought up to me not long ago, I think is a good point to make is if you, um, if you were seeking PR, the probably one of the more important pieces of that puzzle is developing your pitch to the news outlet or wherever you're going for that to get them interested. You know, it's kind of like we talked about on the press release, how important the headline is. If you can't even get them to talk to you about whatever awesome thing you want to try to get the PR for, uh, then it doesn't matter how great it is. So we got to work on that pitch to get through the gatekeeper. Right. Yeah. Um, if you're looking for local media, it's really key to sort of establish a relationship with them. It's the same thing that we at e-releases do. We've worked with people for years. They know us, they know what to expect. And uh, I always recommend people who are looking for like local media coverage, develop that network yourself. It's probably less than 10 local people that would ever write about you or interview you, uh, including radio and TV. Uh, find out who they are. If it's radio or TV, it's, it's usually a booker or a producer, not the actual host. Um, but uh, in newspapers and business uh, newspaper or business magazine, you might be lucky enough to have in your area. Find out who generally writes about companies your size or within your industry, and then just reach out to them by email. I say make it a goal to reach out to them quarterly. Um, let them know, you know, first introduce yourself. Uh, you may want to mention that you saw a story that they did and you really liked it. You may comment on it uh, specifically. They love that because it shows that you're not just blindly sending to stuff like that. And I always recommend if you have a good tip 
like you see something really blowing up in your industry, or you saw a competitor in a different city get picked up for something, you might say, hey, I, I, I thought that uh, you may want to cover this topic. I'm seeing it um, developing in my industry. And even if your company is not a fit for that article, they're going to appreciate the tip. And you're more likely to get through with your future emails when you do want to promote yourself. So yeah. again, it doesn't have to be very complicated. Uh, you know, shoot for a goal of, you know, four to eight times a year to reach out to them. It, for most people, it's probably six people in your local area that you have to do. You don't have to pay for a service to, to do that, that I always recommend doing that yourself. And uh, you'll find that after a while, if you're good at it, uh, you'll get media pickup routinely in the local media. Okay. Yeah. That's a good, uh, good idea about the, uh, what's going on in the industry, because I was just thinking too, like the difference between someone going to the media to say, um, you know, I want you to cover this. We make this awesome product. So I want to get coverage for that versus my company did um, this for the community, you know, we donated some food or donated water or that, uh, again, that humanitarian touch will right. probably get you in the door much quicker than, hey, we make an awesome widget that somebody needs to look at. <laughs> and over the past year, because of the way things are, uh, the media has been wanting to share more positive stories. And right. so I've been advising my clients to do just that. If you're working on something that's positive, you're doing something uh, to help the community. We had a, a distillery that was doing hand sanitizer for the community and stuff like that. And they got a lot of local media pickup. They actually ended up getting some state pickup outside of their city as a result of that, because the media has been sharing a lot of bad news over the past year. And so okay. they're looking to sort of counterbalance that with something that's positive. Yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. Well, Mickey, we appreciate you taking time out of your day to be with us. But before we go, is there any other tips that uh, you'd like to get out there for our PR, uh, for the press releases or our PR activities? I would just uh, advise people that if you are going to consider it, uh, I recommend it because you can potentially get, you know, tens of thousands of dollars of pickup from just a, a few press releases. Uh, but if you are going to test it, you really want to do a proper PR campaign. And that's usually six or more press releases. And you don't want them to be about the same topic. You want to be strategic. So uh, I would always advise people to, to, to approach approach it systematically, uh, take a system like I explained in, in that uh, video training mastermind class that I have uh, and uh, analyze your industry, talk about uh, things that aren't being discussed within your industry. I call these blind spots um, and also look at what they are discussing and can you elevate the conversation by introducing something new to it. Um, but uh, you know, work on the strategy. Uh, that's the most important part of it. Uh, the journalist will forgive a poorly written press release if it's newsworthy and strategic enough. And, and, and that wasn't the case 30 years ago uh, or even 20 years ago when I started, but uh, with social media and everybody texting and stuff like that, you know, uh, it, it's actually helped that if there's, you know, uh, a, a grammatical error, that's not right. going to automatically discount you from getting uh, media pick up that drives you know some people like myself who are english majors a little crazy but i also <laughs> think it's really good because it sort of demo, you know democratizes uh the opportunity for getting pr if your story is relevant that's what's the most important part and so uh you know work on strategy develop a pr campaign and uh it you know it can work for businesses you know regardless of size and regardless of your industry okay awesome well, what is a tool that you use in your daily life? Uh, it, it could be a tool or a habit, something that you do professionally or personally that just really adds a lot of value to your day. Uh, I use an app called 10% Happier. It's a meditation app. Uh, I had tried meditation over the years because it had been recommended to me. I could never figure it out. It was like whenever I, uh, you know, uh, did it, my mind wandered and I was like, I just can't do this. And then 10% Happier does um, uh, sort of coaching. They sort of walk you through what to expect before the meditation. And I learned that 
it's natural that your mind wanders. And what you need to do is just recenter yourself and refocus on the breath. And I've, you know, it's, it's like exercise. I've gotten better at it and I feel uh, more calm. I feel my blood pressure uh, relaxing quite a bit. And, and it really has helped a lot. And it's, it's definitely something I try to do daily. I, on average, I do it like five times a week, but it is a goal of mine to try to do it as much as I can every day. And it keeps me grounded. Uh, you know, in a lot of ways, it, it sort of motivates me and, and brings me more aware in a way that caffeine doesn't. So it, it, it's surprising how that works. Okay, cool. I'll have to try it because I'm like you. I've tried it over the years, but uh, I don't know. I've got too many. I'm always thinking about something and it's hard just to turn that off. And so anyway, I'll give that a try and see if their coaching can help me through that. All right. So you talked about your mastermind class. Uh, tell us about that one more time. I'm going to put that in the show notes, of course, but okay. also um, just tell people, you know, who is your client? How can you help them? And of course, how can they reach out and get a hold of you? Okay. So most of my clients are small business owners, um, startups, uh, about a third of the people that appear on Shark Tank actually use us. Uh, the producers of Shark Tank will often say, you should do a press release before your episode airs and after your episode airs. And uh, they have recommended us uh, from time to time. Uh, Authors also uh, use us. Uh, a lot of even traditional publishers are starting to require their authors to promote themselves rather than they handle it. Um, yeah. So those are the types of customers that we work with across all different types of industries. Uh, and uh, the, the video training or masterclass that I mentioned is at ereleases.com slash plan. Uh, I was advised to sell this for $2,000 uh, when I first developed it and to turn it into a course. And that was all popular, but I wanted to immediately give it to my customers because a lot of them are doing mediocre press releases. And if they can turn those releases into something more strategic, they're going to get more media coverage and they're going to be very happier about their PR campaigns. So I, I wanted to just remove that obstacle. So it, it's completely free. There's nothing uh, that you have to do or, or anything that's required. Um, there's some bonuses if you give me your email address, but that's it. Uh, we hope at the end of the day that you'll use it releases but even if you don't uh it, it's valuable information and uh, i don't see anybody else out there you know producing this this content and this higher level strategic stuff uh, there's a lot of resources for writing a press release and we have those on our website as well um but like i said the strategy is is probably 10 times more important than you know actually crafting the release okay awesome i'll watch out and sign up myself so i'm gonna get over there before the rest of the listeners do and get signed up so I can uh, you know better because that's something I do not take as much advantage of as I should so I'm going to get on that this week so thank you we thank you again for taking time out of your day to come share uh, the world of press releases and PR with us it's been very interesting and I know that uh, I know I gained a lot so I'm sure the audience did too so that's going to do it for another episode of the business of business podcast you can find us at www.thebusinessofbusinesspodcast.com. Of course, we are all on all the uh, major social media channels as well as on the podcast platforms, iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, uh, Google. And uh, if we're not on one that you listen to, please reach out. I'd be glad to get us added. Also, a video of this interview will be put up on YouTube when it is released. So until next time, take care of yourself and take care of your business.